I've seen quite a few questions recently involving rounding that my students haven't been able to do. So I haven't thought to do a video previously on rounding, but it's long overdue for me to do one. And this video is gonna have three questions in increasing order of difficulty, starting with the one you can see on screen. As always, feel free to pause the video, try the question yourself and see if you can get it right before my explanation. But otherwise, I'm gonna get straight into it. A coffee chain has 1,275 employees. If 2% of the employees rounded to the nearest percent are to be fired, which of the following could be the number of employees that are fired? So this 2% figure that they talk about, 2% of the employees are gonna be fired, is a rounded figure. That means this might not be the exact number of employees, they've just rounded it. So I want you to think of two things. What's the least possible percentage that could have actually been fired? And what's the highest possible percentage that could have actually been fired? And I wanna mention something interesting here. A lot of my students get the minimum right, but then they struggle with the maximum. So a lot of students would say to me, oh, the minimum is 1.5%, which is correct, because 1.5 rounds to two, but if we went any lower than that, it would round to one. So 1.5% is the lowest possible actual percentage that were fired if it rounds to two. But then for the highest, they might say something like 1.9 or two, or even 2.4. And all of those are wrong, unfortunately. The figure that we're gonna use for the highest possibility is actually 2.5. Now, I've drawn the inequality carefully here because I know what immediately all of you are gonna say, but 2.5 rounds up to three, that's not fair. Yes, and that's why I put the less than symbol because technically we can't have exactly 2.5, that would round to three, but we can have 2.4999999, which is essentially the same thing as 2.5. So technically it can't equal 2.5, but we're gonna write less than 2.5. And here's the important point that I want you to remember. We're gonna use the figures of 1.5 and 2.5 in our calculations, even though me and you both agree that technically 2.5 rounds up, we're still gonna use those figures. I want you guys to remember that upper bound of 0.5, even if you realize it can't be exactly that, but for the purposes of calculation, that's what we need to use. So the real percentage of the number of people fired, if it was rounded to two, is somewhere between 1.5 and 2.5%. Now we just show off our percentage skills and work out what 1.5% 1 of 1,275. You should know in a calculator, the way to do this is to do zero point, and you'll see on the screen, 0 0.015 times the number. If you didn't know that, check out my videos on percentages. This gives us 19.125. And it's important to realize that this is the lower bound, 19.1. That means it couldn't have been 19 employees. Remember, with the 1.5%, that's the exact lower bound. So the minimum possible was 19.1, meaning it couldn't be 19 or lower in terms of the number of employees fired. So answers A and B that you can see on the left can't work. 16 and 19 are too low. The upper bound, and again, we're gonna use that 2.5% figure, 0 0.025 times the number, is 31.875. But that exact number is not allowed, remember, we agreed, it has to be less than 2.5%. So anything less than 31.875 is allowed. So that includes 31, 29, 25, as you can see on screen. So the correct answers are 25, 29, and 31, because they're above 19.1 and below 31.8. Any of those three numbers, could have been the number of employees fired. Obviously there are other numbers like 20, 21, 30, for example. In terms of the options given, which is typically the way they ask this kind of question, we would tick C, D, and E as the correct answers. Now the next example is gonna be great for those people who want to push it to the next level and really test themselves on a harder rounding question. Here we go. A coffee chain has 24,550 customers last year. If 7.2% of these customers rounded to the nearest 0.1% are new customers, 
which of the following could have been the number of new customers of the chain? Tick all that apply. And now a lot of you are gonna put your hands up and say, okay, I know about going below and above and setting the range and the inequality, but I actually don't know how to come up with those 0.5 figures. Is there a rule that we can follow? And I have good news, there is a rule. And it's gonna be particularly useful here because when we're rounding to the nearest 0.1%, it can get confusing for some students. So here's what I want you to do. When they say they're rounding to the nearest 0.1%, or even if they said rounding to the nearest 0.01%, whatever they say, take that figure and divide it by two. So 0.1 divided by two is 0.05. Just to repeat, if they say they're rounding to a certain thing and to the nearest 0.1 or to the nearest 0.5, whatever they say, take that figure, divide it by two. Then we add the result to our figure. So in this case, they said 7.2% of our customers are new. So we add 0.05 and that gets us 7.25 as the upper bound. And for the other end, we take away 0.05. That's 7.2, take away 0.05, which is 7.15. And this is an important moment for a lot of those students who struggle to realize what the boundaries would be. Take the figure that we're rounding to. For example, if they say rounding to the nearest integer, well, an integer is one, right? Half of one, 0 0.5. So we add on 0 0.5 and take away 0 0.5 to find the upper and lower boundary. Whatever they say we're rounding to, take that figure, divide it by two, and then add it on to our rounded number or take it away from our rounded number to find the upper and lower bound. Don't worry, there'll be one last example at the end where we'll cover this, the hardest boss level example. But for now, we can see that it was between 7.25% as the upper bound and 7.15% as the lower bound. Then we're gonna show off our percentage skills yet again by doing 24,550 times the lower bound, 0.0715, that's how you do percentages. And that gives us 1775.32. Applying the upper bound, because we always use that figure, even though technically we can't be 7.25, we get 0 0.0725 times by our figure, and the upper bound is 1779.875. Now this time I want you, if you were previously just listening to my explanation, to pick out the right answers, therefore, based on this range. Pause for a moment and see if you can get it you should have picked the following set of numbers between 1776 and 1779. Why? Because the lower bound is 1775.3. So our answer has to be above that. So it doesn't include 1775. Remember, 1775.32 is the lower bound and 1775 exactly is below that. So we can't include it. We have to start with 1776. Likewise, 1779.8 is the upper bound. So we can't reach 1780. So the last one's not an option, but 1779 is included and all the other numbers between those. So the correct answer here would be C through to F. And finally, we're gonna have a boss level rounding question. Sarah drove a truck that traveled 24 miles, rounded to the nearest mile in 35 minutes, rounded to the nearest five minutes. What is the positive difference between the maximum and minimum speed the truck could have been going rounded to the nearest integer in miles per hour? That is a lot of rounding involved in one question. But let's get started immediately with the techniques that we know about. It said that she traveled 24 miles rounded to the nearest mile. Now, many of you would instantly look at that and say, okay, definitely it's between 23.5 and 24.5. But for those of you who are still unsure about how we got that, remember that it said rounded to the nearest mile, which is the same thing as rounded to the nearest one mile. One mile divided by two is 0 0.5. Add on 0 0.5 to 24 and we get 24.5, the upper bound. Take away 0 0.5 from 24 and we get 23.5, which is the lower bound. So again, the trick works. That's the range for the amount of miles that she did. Now you get one last chance to prove yourself on rounding. It said that she took 35 minutes 
rounded to the nearest five minutes. So can you pause the video and tell me what the upper bound and the lower bound for the number of minutes that she took is? Well, it said rounded to the nearest five minutes. So we take that five minutes and divide by two. That gives us 2.5 minutes. Add that on to 35 and we get 37.5 minutes. Take away from 35 and we get 32.5 minutes. That's the upper and the lower bound. And if you understand now how we got all of these, then you are truly the don of rounding. But now we get on to the next phase of the question, which is tricky. What is the positive difference between the maximum and minimum speed the truck could have been going? How are we gonna calculate the maximum speed? Do we take the maximum distance and divide by the maximum time? Or the minimum distance with the maximum time? How do we do it? Well, let's think about it. To go the maximum speed, we want to achieve the maximum amount of miles in the minimum amount of time. So that's the formula we're gonna use. The max speed, and speed is distance divided by time, you can use a triangle. We're gonna find by doing the maximum number of miles, the upper end of the miles range, divided by the minimum amount of time. That maxes out our speed. Remember, dividing by a small number maxes the fraction. Okay, so here the max number of miles was 24.5. The minimum amount of time was 32.5. And of course, we remember when we type this into the calculator that we're dealing with miles per minute. And the question was actually asking for miles per hour. So after we get the result, 0 0.7538, we multiply by 60 to get miles per hour. If she can do 0 0.75 three, eight miles in a minute, in an hour, she can do 60 times as much. So 45.23 miles per hour is the max speed she could have been going. Just to finish this question off, can you show me how we would calculate the minimum speed? Well, the minimum speed would be the least amount of miles, the min miles, divided by the max amount of time to go really slowly. Min miles divided by max time. The min miles was 23.5, and the max time was 37.5. And again, once we have that figure, we times by 60 to get into miles per hour. Finally, they threw in one final spanner. They said, what is the positive difference between these two? So we have to subtract it, rounded to the nearest integer. So after you subtract these two to find the difference, that's 7.63, we then round that to the nearest integer, which is eight miles an hour. That's the nearest whole number. So there's an eight mile an hour difference roughly between the max speed she could have been going and the min speed she could have been going. And I hope by this end of the video, you are much more comfortable with rounding. If you are, please let me know in the comments. Please do leave a like. And to be honest, even if you leave a dislike, YouTube doesn't even show it anymore. So what's the point? You might as well leave a like and a comment. Why not? Have a wonderful day.